Good afternoon. I'm Tom O'Donnell. I'm the executive director of the LBJ Washington Center, and we are the home of the D.C. concentration in federal policy within the two public policy degrees offered at the LBJ School. So what is the D.C. concentration? The D.C. concentration is an accelerated course of both study and work, and it's in two cities. It's in Austin and in Washington, D.C. So normally you would get your de uh, public policy degree uh, via four semesters over three years. This is four semesters over two years. So your first two semesters are in Austin with a, a curriculum that's much like the regular curriculum, curriculum but modified a little bit for the DC concentration. Uh, in, when you finish the spring semester, you move immediately up to Washington, DC. You have the summer and fall in D.C. where you're taking classes at night here at the Washington Center, two nights a week, and you're working in basically full-time jobs all around the city, and that could be the federal government, uh, it could be a think tank, it could be the Congress, it could be anything you can think of that has some connection to federal policy. Uh, right now, in the current year, we have one student working, doing his po uh, public his policy apprenticeship, that's what they're called for six months, his policy apprenticeship at the Office of the Speaker of the House. And we have another student at the American Enterprise Institute. We have another student uh, who's working directly for the staff director of the House Budget Committee on the minority or Democratic side. So really, the um, it's very student-driven. Uh, we assist, and the LBJ faculty assist, and, and most especially the LBJ alumni up here in D.C. work with students to secure these policy apprenticeships. But the good news after this accelerated, intensified course of study and work is you graduate six months earlier. So the students you began with, your classmates down in Austin, would graduate in May of their third year after they started, you will graduate in December of your second year and enter the policy market six months earlier and at a, at a quieter time. I think it's an advantage to enter the market not just when everyone else in the country is coming to Washington, D.C., looking for internships and, and jobs. So that's it in a nutshell. And of course, I'm happy to answer any questions. speak, Tom, a little bit to what your experience, what a student's experience is going to be like in D.C. so they arrive and what happens? So when they arrive, uh, well, we have an opening night reception for them where we have all of the D.C. faculty, some of the policy apprentice supervisors, so from the Hill or from think tanks, a lot of our alumni, and they, we have a nice evening where people can network. And then either the next day or the following Monday, their first classes begin at night. We try to have classes on Monday and Wednesday night. The students seem to like that best for their schedule. But for sure, the following Monday, their policy apprenticeship starts. So they begin working the minimum amount of time as students must work to get the appropriate academic credit is Monday through Thursday, eight hours a day. But we find our students tend to work more and that's because they want to. So there is uh, time management is an important skill to either have or master during your two semesters in Austin because it is a, it's pretty intensive and it is accelerated, again, with the payoff that you graduate six months earlier and uh, off cycle with the job uh, market of the summer. Thank you, Tom. When you are reviewing candidates, a question that we receive a lot in admissions is, what makes a successful applicant? What are you looking for? That's an excellent question. Obviously, we want smart students. Uh, the D.C. public policy marketplace, as you can imagine, is pretty competitive because we have all the public policy schools in the country sending students here, and several of those public policy schools are located here. So obviously a basic level of smartness, uh, but just as important a level of maturity, which could be reflected because of prior work experience, that's important. But it, uh, some, some demonstration that a student can handle the concentrated nature of the work, because it does get pretty intense up here in D.C. Of course, we've had 
I don't know, close to 40, or we will have close to 40 graduates through the program, and all have graduated and all have gotten jobs. Uh, but time management, so we're looking for mature students. And then I guess the third thing is we want to look at applicants who have a demonstrated interest in public policy, and to the extent they can explain why DC makes sense for them, that's very important. So we've had strong applications from some students who don't even mention Washington, DC. That's a big negative. We, we, we usually won't admit somebody like that. Uh, but somebody who demonstrates either through prior work experience or uh, names a few places that they could see themselves working at in D.C., that's a big plus. We like to see that kind of focus because, again, it's an accelerated program. There's not a lot of time to sit back and think, all right, what do I want to do when I get to D.C.? We will walk students through that process, but we'd like to see a demonstration of focus in the application. Can you speak a little to the flexibility within the schedule because it is concentrated? Another question we often get is when a student comes into the DC concentration, what options are available in terms of classes? Are they able to take anything outside? What does that look like? Yes. For the first two cohorts that we had in the DC concentration, there really, it was pretty a rigid curriculum to be fair. People could pick different sections among core requirements. So obviously everyone has to take microeconomics and you could, the DC students could take one of several sections. But we did think we needed to loosen up the curriculum. So for the current cohort that's in Austin right now, we've moved their public policy, their public management core course up to Washington. So they'll take that up here and what that does, it gives them all an elective down in Austin. They can take it in the spring or in the fall, and that's one element of, of uh, loosening up the curriculum. For the GPS students, uh, there's a writing requirement for all the DC students, but we allow the GPS students to take GPS writing sections. That's also uh, something that we thought was very important so they get a little more exposure to a uh, subject matter area that they like. Now, when they come to DC, they are all in the same classes, so there, there's no flexibility, if you will, up here. But there is one course that we have currently called the Survey of Contemporary Policy Issues. It's a modular course, so that means we have three different instructors teach three different subject matter areas for four weeks at a time. And this year we had uh, energy and the environment, uh, elections and campaigns, and cybersecurity. And the students seem to like that refreshing break from uh, a lot of the core course requirements. So we're always looking for flexibility. We're, we're, we're entertaining whether we can change one of our legislative courses here into a policy development course, which would then free up another elective down in uh, down in Austin, but the truth is the trade-off for graduating six months earlier and being here in Washington is that you're going to have a, a more constrained curriculum, which is why focus is something we look for in the application process. Thank you. Tom, can you talk a little bit about the um, sort of extracurricular opportunities for students once they get up to the Washington Center in D.C.? Well, it's an interesting question. Now, it gets, as I said, it does the, get pretty intense here between their working and their studying at night, but we put on a fair number of networking events. We work very closely with, for instance, the Archer Center, which is for the whole UT system, with the DC Texas X's, with the LBJ Alumni Association up here. So last night we had an event uh, the LBJ Foundation gives out a uh, something called the Hardeman Prize to uh, the to the person who writes usually a scholar the best book on the U.S. Congress. So last night we hosted that, and we will host it going forward. The awarding of that prize to a Princeton professor, and we had former uh, Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle here serving as the moderator, and then we had a reception here for between 80 and 100 people. A lot of them were LBJ alumni. And that's an example of the kind of things we try to do that give the students the ability to network. Now, of course, they're all networking like crazy on their own. 
and uh, one of the requirements of the policy apprenticeship course is that they submit a weekly, pub, a weekly policy apprentice journal, and Robin and I read through those, and we really can see all the network that they're doing because they're all over the city. They work with each other to do networking. So beyond the formal networking that we do, uh, they do a lot of informal network. As you can imagine, the number of things that happen here in Washington, D.C. on any given day. The other aspect of the program that we haven't mentioned is that we do, uh, each LBJ student is afforded a mentor, while an alumni mentor while they're in Austin. But when they come to Washington, we also hook them up with a D.C. area senior alumni mentor that they can talk to uh, about just anything they want. Any, you know, what's it like to live in D.C.? Uh, how does my career unfold? And uh, that that is good. Many of them use the senior mentors, but many of them also develop their own mentors just by poking their head around town. Great, thanks. And can you also, I, I know I understand that the point of the, the program is to end up in D.C., but uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, if there's a student that maybe doesn't end up in D.C., what kind of trajectory the program can give for them just in general? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, the LBJ school, you know, one of the top 10 public policy schools in the country. So all of our students, whether they're in Washington or they do the traditional program in Austin, are getting, you know, the great fundamental found academic foundation for a public policy career. If they come to D.C., they, the, the opportunity to work and study at the same time, that translates very well when they enter the job market. Most of them stay here in Washington, but we've had several go to Texas. We have one right now up in Massachusetts. And they, even though they didn't stick in D.C., and maybe they'll come back, uh, they all say the same thing, which is they just feel prepared. They hit the ground running on both working and having the academic foundation to do what they need to do to be successful in their jobs. Great, thank you. Tom, is there anything in general that you can think of that you would like to tell a prospective applicant, somebody who's looking and they're not so sure, like what is, what makes us so unique? Well, I can say for the school in general, it, it's a very boutique kind of school. We have a very, very, uh, I don't know if the word's low or high, but we have a lot of professors per student. And what I've observed in the almost four years of working with the school is that it's a very intimate experience. The professors really do care about the students. The alumni really care about the students. And then for people in the D.C. concentration, it's a super intimate, it's a boutique experience, if you will, when they get up here because, you know, we'll have probably at most 20 students any given year. And so they really bond together. The LBJ alumni up here take a very special interest in the D.C. concentration students. So if I had to use one word for the whole experience of LBJ, I would say it, it's intimate. I love that. I also love the focus that it requires to be a successful candidate here in the DC program. That's something that students often ask about. I think knowing that in advance is really useful. Yeah. And if they look closely at the application, they can always look at, you know, the general MPEF and, and GPS applications. You can see our questions are tailored just a little bit more towards talk to us more about YDC and talk to us a little bit more about what you see yourself doing in the future and what you've done in, in the past. Now, having said that, we have admitted several right out of undergrad students who have been superb and uh, they are academically strong. There's a maturity, but our application process is a little more intimate again in that both Robin, who's sitting here, my deputy director, and I, we Skype with every student that we are probably going to admit or who we are wondering, hmm, let's talk to them a little more and see what we think. So people get a chance to make the case to us in person as well. And we have had examples where on paper, uh, 
we would have admitted the student without knowing more, but when we spoke to them, it was very clear they, they really didn't have any focus. On the other hand, we spoke to others who had good grades, maybe not as good as that person that we didn't admit, but when we spoke to them, we, it, we would just nod our heads, yes, this person, this person knows what they want. And that's what we're looking for. Students, they don't have to know perfectly what they want, but they just have a little bit of hunger for coming to D.C and for pursuing a public policy career. Thank you, and one last question I have for you, sort of circling back when you're talking about pairing up a student with a mentor, someone who's an alumni that has, a senior alumni that has experience. Can you speak mm -hmm. a little bit to what that means, experience, how long have they been in DC, connections being important, like what does that look like? It, it really depends. What we do is when we, when we finally have a cohort admit it, like the cohort down in Austin right now, we have them create mini professional biographies, and we match their photos to that, and we send it out to our entire master mailing list, but also to our alumni list, and we ask people, anyone on here, is there someone here that you think would you could be a mentor for, or is there somebody here you think would be good for a policy apprenticeship? And then we, do the matching. We work with, we have a steering committee up here of LBJ alumni that we meet with once a month for breakfast. They do a lot of that matching for us. And so a lot of that, it, it really depends. Some of them are a little closer in age to the students, so they're going to talk about different issues than somebody who's had a 40-year career and can look from the top down and give them more of a, a career flight. What we really try to tell the mentors and all our alumni is, Make the connection, but then make other connections based on what you're hearing from the student. So it's really kind of a, a network that begins with the uh, alumni mentor. Thank you so much, Tom. We really appreciate you taking the time today to have a little webinar with us. Sarah, before we let you go, I know it's busy time for you. Is there anything else you'd like to leave us with? Any parting words and wisdom? No, I would just say uh, I encourage uh, people to apply. It really is the, as I said, we're, we're part of the, a top 10 public policy school, and this is the only concentration in federal policy in the country. There's no other school in the country that offers this accelerated degree. So if you think you have an inkling for Washington, apply. And do you have any issues? I love that you said that. If you have any, do you and your admissions committee have any problem if somebody wants to apply to both straight in path here and the DC program? We have had students do that. I don't have any problem with that. The only thing people should know is admissions to one does not guarantee admission to the other. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Tom and Robin. We really appreciate it. It's always great well, seeing thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.